Hello, my name is Sam Feltham and welcome to Expert Interviews here on Smash the Fat. With me today is film producer, TV presenter and now low-carb blogger Sam Klebanov. How are you doing, Sam? Oh, I'm fine. How are you? I'm pretty good, pretty good. Um, and uh, just to kind of give a bit of background to people, um, you're, you're a film producer and TV presenter, so sort of kind of how have you got into this low-carb, high-fat movement from kind of that industry? Well, it all started with a book which I bought at the airport when I was on the way to Helsinki Film Festival from Gothenburg. It was uh, Food Revolution by Dr. Andreas Enfeld, a very popular book in Sweden. And I've kind of heard about this uh, abbreviation LCHF. And I heard some news on TV, it was in the autumn, that uh, some of Swedish commission, governmental commission, uh, recognized as the most effective uh, way of losing weight and at that time I was kind of worrying that <laughs> I gained more weight than I wanted to. I was considered myself as kind of healthy, properly living individual, lots of sport, uh, like low fat diet, mm -hmm. uh, try to avoid all the like, fat products and uh, eat less, but I was like, gaining weight slowly every year. So I was just kind of worried. I thought, okay, I cannot eliminate fat from my diet to like negative figures. I can, <laughs> I'm already near zero. What else uh, am I supposed to do? And then I started to read this book at the, in the airplane. And you know, it's not far from Gothenburg to Helsinki, just a bit over one hour. But when I landed, I decided I will try it. And then I tried and I kept reading on and I started to read more sources. And uh, I started to see how it uh, worked on me. And uh, I started to lose weight. I basically started to feel better. I had this irritating, irritating coughing, which mm -hmm. was haunting me for like 15 years. I had no idea what to do with it. I went to all the doctors, and no doctor could, pin, could pinpoint the origin of this coughing. But then it also disappeared. And then uh, I started to, because, I mean, originally I'm from Russia, but I live in Sweden. I still work in Russia. I kind of commute between Sweden and Russia a lot. And I googled, like, how well-known is this concept in Russia, and then I realized it's virtually unknown. So I decided to, basically, to import the concept of LCHF from Sweden to Russia. Well, of course, there was some low-carb uh, blogs and websites, but they all looked very kind of amateurish and professional, and they were not uh, they were not based on what's called evidence-based medicine. Mm -hmm. It was like more or less like blocks of some amateurs. And we decided, and then I found another guy who was a scientific journalist. His name is Karen, and we decided to build this website with like very high scientific standards that we would like publish the news and uh, made and the news about the studies and have proper references and, and so on. And that, then how it all started. Fantastic. And I kind of became aware of you because uh, you featured my, my 5,000 yeah. calorie self-experiments on your blog, which apparently got quite a good reception from... Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, 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 it hundreds of likes and shares and people discussed it. Yeah, it was good to see that people really started to discuss it. Yeah, it was great that you got in touch with me. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Always, always willing to kind of, you know, spread the word of kind of, you know, LCHF and real food. And also, it's great to connect with people all around the world that are kind of coming to similar um, conclusions about how to kind of lead a healthy life and eat healthily as well. Um, so people can kind of check out your blog at LCHF. Dot R U, and you can kind of use Google Translate to kind of get the gist of what they're saying. Yeah. I mean, obviously, the sentences sometimes don't make quite sense. In yeah, English. and sometimes, you know, I read, I mean, my article about you just in Google Translate just to have an idea what kind of an information you got, and some sentences actually they got an opposite meaning of what used to what it, what there were in 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 the original, but yeah, more or less you got the idea. 
Yeah, yeah, you get the idea. If you if you use Google Translate, obviously it's not yeah. a complete translation, but it's there or thereabouts. I maybe it was um, a good motivation to study Russian. Yeah, absolutely. Or you could just do that. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. That that that'd be some sort of personal development thing to be able to learn Russian. I think for for a lot of us folks over here. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, I really really appreciate you kind of posting that. Um, and kind of what um, what's the movement like in in Russia now that you've kind of put this website together and you have this scientific standard and that you're kind of getting it out to the masses? Yeah, I mean, we had a very good start. Uh, I think in the during the first months of operation, they were visited by around 140, 150,000 people. Brilliant. And uh, we got noticed by mainstream media. One of the Russia biggest and, in my opinion, nastiest tabloids, Komsomolskaya Pravda, <laughs> which, really, which I really love. But they they got they put an article about us and they asked. Uh, some uh, nutritionist, uh, dietologist, to comment on it, and of course, they they attacked us. And but they said like a lot of kind of bullshit, like, oh, you know, he's talking about eating a lot of fat, but you, you will, it will it will increase your risk of like, cardiovascular diseases, and you will get atherosclerosis, and this and that, and all these things which you heard for like we've been hearing for decades. So we put. We published an answer. Just ask them to come up with an evidence, mm -hmm. not just say something. But yeah, okay, maybe we are wrong. I said I'm not a doctor. I'm not I'm not a professional. I just write about these uh, studies and uh, what modern science is telling you. If I'm not uh, right, cr don't criticize me. Criticize these studies. And but they never replied. But uh, also some they got much more positive reviews in the press too. And like. And uh, yeah, so we're getting like a couple of thousand people visiting us every day, and we've been like around for only a, year, a month and a half. So I think it's it's a good start, and we'll, I think we'll be growing from from that. And it seems like people spend more and more time on our website reading more articles. I can see on the statistics that we get these figures growing, and now I get lots of comments and messages from people that they are. Uh, actually switched on to LCHF. Lot of lots of people actually from film business because I mean a lot of people in my social networks are film professionals. But it was funny, I went to the opening of Moscow Film Festival and all the producers and directors and actors came to me and started to ask me like what to eat, what not to eat. <laughs> 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 it was like, really really funny, you know, all this like, can, like black tie dress code and so on, and people ask, oh, you know, how much fruit, sh fruit should I eat every day, <laughs> and these things. So yeah, and I get lo lots of personal stories, and actually it's it's nice, because you feel like you're changing people's life, and people are writing me about how much weight they lost, and a girl wrote me that actually her asthma got much better, and she thanked me for that. And yeah, and it seems like Okay, we got we spiked in the beginning when we had all this coverage, and now it's like more kind of steady growing, but still like we have stable a couple of thousands a day visitors. It's fantastic! It's fantastic! And it's great that it's kind of getting in uh, into the film and TV. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's, it's it's good because lots of because all these people because I'm also a journalist. I mean, I'm doing lots of things. I'm not only film producer. I'm first of all, I'm film distributor. Too and uh, I'm doing like I'm a journalist. Too. I was doing film journalism and I'm writing for GQ magazine Russia. So like lots of people on my social network there, either from film business or like from film world, film industry or from uh, journalism. And all these people are very well connected socially. So you get like your word spread. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, and it spread to the word kind of obviously very rapidly and very widely. Um, so it's it's amazing that you've only been going about a month and a half, and you're kind of hitting those numbers already. And it'll be interesting to see kind of towards kind of the end of the summer to see how many success yeah, stories that you have and things exactly. like that. Exactly, because we're asking people to send to send us their stories. We want to to give people examples. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I use myself as an example. I think that's what worked because I started with publishing my own story with my own pictures, how I was before, 
like and after like 15 kilograms of difference and people could see it and because also I'm quite well known on TV so people could see okay it's a real guy it's not just some Photoshop pictures it's somebody who we saw who, whose articles were read so it was good that's fantastic that's fantastic and so when you first started LCHF kind of what what was kind of your first introduction? What was your first day like, for instance, when you made that transition? Ah, it was it was very easy. I mean, I came to to Helsinki to this film festival. I was reading the book on the airplane, and we started. And then I, I came, checked into the hotel. I went to a party, and then I just yeah, I decided okay, I'll start now. <laughs> <laughs> so I bought all the bread stuff and and and. and just picked up things which with no carbs, and then. But the most important thing was the next breakfast because, for like ages, I was eating what I thought was a healthy breakfast: cereals, mm -hmm. sandwich, like with a low-fat spread <laughs> and low-fat cheese, and uh, often uh, freshly squeezed uh, orange juice, which, as I know now contained more sugar than a glass of cola <laughs> <laughs> but that's what and a coffee with uh, skimmed milk <laughs> so <laughs> that was my breakfast and then I'm coming to this you know this hotel when you can basically yeah take anything like breakfast buffet and I'm taking eggs and bacon I haven't I haven't been like tasting bacon for like 15 years or something, because <laughs> I thought it was evil, like fat, evil. Fat was equal like, to evil to me. And mm. all these good things. And then I thought, oh, wow, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting beginning of, of a good life. And then I came, I came a couple, the, I started to keep it like in Helsinki. I came back home. I went and I bought like a heavy whipping cream. And, that, and for the first time, I tried my coffee not with skimmed milk, but with the heavy whipping cream. And I thought, wow. I was deprived <laughs> of that pleasure for like 15 years at least. That, that feels good. And of course, well, I had some problems too because I was like really, I really li loved sweet things, desserts. Mm -hmm. And you know, as a film professional, I travel to film festivals. And then the film festivals, you go to lots of parties. And then at the end of the every party, they bring you desserts and I couldn't resist any dessert. So, so I could, I had to try all the desserts which were on the table. Some desserts I had to try them twice. So I think that was a problem. Or when I went to this film market in Argentina, you know, in Buenos Aires, they have this thing called dulce de leche. It's kind of caramelized milk. It's so good. I had to eat it every day, like ice cream and pancakes, everything with dulce de leche. So I'm coming to this film festival in Pusan in, in South Korea, and I'm going to Italian like reception, they have lots of good food and I could manage well because I mean there is a lot of good things in Italian food except pasta. Basically everything else was like real low carb, like seafood and stuff. But then at the end they bring in desserts and every, every, everybody's taking desserts and it's a great variety of desserts and I feel like a little bit miserable. But okay, I decided to, to go and to pick up all kind of cheese which was there. And somehow just realized, okay, if I eat like really good cheese, it kind of kills my craving for the dessert. Mm -hmm. So, well, basically, yeah. I didn't experience a lot of, um, like, all these uh, problems of mm -hmm. switching over, because, which I read about. For me, it was pretty smooth, the transition. Yeah, yeah. For for a lot of guys, it tends to be a smoother transition than for females. Actually, yes. I've heard from lots of girls that they tried and they mm. felt terrible, and yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's quite a common observation that um, women tend to have kind of uh, a higher um, or a worse low carb flu. Uh, so kind of in the first couple of weeks, you might um, feel like you've got headaches or you might have sort of, you know, um, maybe constipation issues as your gut bacteria kind of changes. Um, it doesn't tend to happen so much in guys. Um, actually, yes. Actually, yeah. I was consulting some girls on their constipations because they started mm -hmm. to write me letters. And I thought, well, that's weird. I'm sitting, I'm consulting. 
unknown girls about their constipation, but I felt kind of responsible because they followed my advice, so I called to the doctors who I knew, talked to them, I read what Andreas Enfeld wrote in his blog, so I gave them some, but it seems like they got better. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they they usually do. They usually do. It's just whilst they're kind of making that transition that eventually kind of, yeah, the gut bacteria changes slightly and then it becomes better. One thing that we kind of encourage is to have some sort of fermented vegetables, uh, which helps kind of obviously feed uh, the gut bacteria and help in that transition. So things like sauerkrauts, um, gherkins, or, or anything like that. Um, can kind of like help out just in terms of that transitional period, especially for, for females as well. Um, so yeah, you might want to um, add that to the that, site. That's a good, yeah, yeah, I'll add it. It's, it's interesting idea. Yeah, it's a good advice, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, crowd is very popular in Russia. Yeah. You can, you can easily find it in any shop, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, and, and, and pickled red cabbage and, and stuff yeah, yeah. like that, you know. Um, it's, it's very easily available. Um, but anyway, um, it's, it's a completely amazing story. And so what does your um, your diet look like today, for instance? Is it, is it much different than when you first started? Or Well, I started to do like more experiments with bacon and stuff because... Uh, that's what people are interested in, and we were opening a web store when we will uh, sell almond flour and coconut flour and things, uh, and fiber husk, things like that. So I'm doing, I'm trying more more things. Well, usually it's some kind of egg and breakfast, uh, egg and bacon breakfast. Today, my, uh, my wife and I had uh, boiled egg, eggs with mayonnaise and with cheese and vegetables and uh, some pork. Sometimes I do omelette or some kind of pudding or some kind of egg muffins or I do kind of uh, cottage cheese pancakes with eggs and fiber husk. So I'm trying to have some variety. And you know I started to eat actually to eat uh, uh, much less frequently. Mm -hmm. Usually I eat now like twice a day. Before I ate, like, I ate like three times a day and had some snacks in between. Now I don't feel I need it. So now it's summertime, so we're very, we live in the house, so very, most days we barbecue something. Some fish or meat or just sausages. You know, my father came by yesterday and he, he's fishing a lot, so he brought some fish to us, <laughs> which, <laughs> which he caught. So we had some freshly caught fish for dinner nice. last night. Yeah. So it's yeah, it's just some kind of vegetables like cauliflower or zucchinis or aubergines and meat or fish and some kind of sauce or salad. Mm -hmm. That sort of thing. That's awesome. Um, and uh, obviously that's kind of working out for you. And how long have you been doing this now? Well, since October. So it's uh, like like nine months, I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but that's awesome. Yeah. And as you kind of mentioned uh, towards the beginning of the interview, uh, you're actually living in Sweden and you're trying to commute to Russia and yeah. things. What, what, what's it like in Sweden at the moment with the whole kind of... Uh, this being kind of almost the um, the the mecca for the LCHF. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, well, what's the difference between Sweden and, and Russia is, first of all, availability of the products. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, basically, we, we tell people, even on our website, okay, we are going to open the web store, but we don't force you to buy things. I mean, all these LCHF products, they are unnecessary. You can just eat excellent breakfast and bacon and meat but if you want to add something like bake things or do like pancakes you need some special products and in Sweden you can buy them in every shop basically you could wherever you go you can find all these products in Russia it's impossible it's even hard to find online in wow. Sweden you can buy a lot of like magazines and like biggest Swedish tabloids have special LCHF supplements bi-weekly wow. with lots of with lots of recipes and I find lots of answers to the questions which people ask me in these magazines and lots I try lots of recipes from from these magazines and we publish them on our website lots of books so it's kind of popular at the same time you still feel that okay it's still a minority 
because you still see lots of fat people. You can still see lots of like low fat uh, kind of light products being sold, but still you see like I think you see like more real food is available mm -hmm. and becoming it feels like it's becoming more popular. It's like uh, for example, thing called smetana. It's Russian word. It's uh, creme fresh. And now you can buy it in Sweden with like 43% fat. Oh, awesome. it's so good. Yeah, it's so good. You can't find it in Russia. I mean, Smetana is a Russian product. And it <laughs> says like, even in the package, it's, like, it's, it's Russian product. But you can't find it of that quality. And of that, of that this percentage of fat uh, in Russia, you can't find it with more than 30% of fat. So you, you, you see more, more availability. And actually, you see more people talking about that. And you like meet somebody, you start to talk, yeah, and I doing it, or like my parents are doing it. So you, it's like more. You, you feel more more people who eat alike. Absolutely, absolutely. More and more people are starting to eat kind of the real foods and and kind of starting off with this low carb movement. That's awesome. And and do you see Russia kind of going in a similar way? Well, uh, it's it's hard to say because if you look at the most popular like channels so like media outlets they're still uh, far behind like there is a program on channel one in russia which is like the biggest tv channel every morning there is a program about like healthy healthy life mm -hmm. it's called like healthy living by this very popular doctor malish who's like number one tv doctor in russia and when you see what she's teaching people like it's still same old like eat less fat um, and she said, okay, you, you have to eat like five, six times a day, but eat a little bit. And she's illustrating it with a small portion of macaroni with some kind, with some kind of meat. Surefire <laughs> way to get yourself hungrier. <laughs> yeah, but uh, actually we, start, we are starting to, to mock all these things on our website and social networks. So people kind of notice it. But at the same time, there are like lots of more... I would say advanced media outlets, especially online, mm -hmm. run by like young, well-educated people, and it seems like this uh, low-carb, high-fat uh, diet is becoming a fashion among uh, kind of smart urbanites in Moscow, and especially among uh, many journalists. That's mm -hmm. why we we got so much welcome from at least part of the media in Russia because like I got a big interview published in a very popular website, one of the most popular in Moscow. And I know that the editor in chief of this website, he's eating like that himself. Until he was very happy to see my website and he called me, asked me for the interview. And um, I was just like this week I was asked by interview by two T V channels. So it seems like well it's going to be like a holy war <laughs> between yeah. the old and the new. And I'm looking forward to it because it's going to be fun. And people, yeah. and this conflict, I think, will attract people people's attention. It's, it's better than, than, than nobody would notice. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, it's kind of similar all over the world where you've kind of like got the old school kind of low fat advocates and you've got this kind of new school of thought that have kind of got this this bunch of randomized controlled trials over the past yeah. 50 years supporting their point and kind of the low fat advocates are sort of you know thinking what do we do where do we <laughs> how do we exactly uh, that's uh, that's why i feel my position is very strong even that i'm not a professional i have sometimes to 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 to, to this to discuss these things with, uh, with doctors, it's just okay. You are a doctor, I'm not. But I, my conclusions are based on this and that so studies. Please just show me that these studies are wrong, not, 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 me. not, not, not my fault. It's, it's, tell me about the studies. So, yeah, it's, it's interesting, really. Absolutely. It's as in, and, and fingers crossed it kind of um, it progresses in Russia and maybe even get that you'll appear on even more TV shows and even have maybe yeah. a debate. Actually, with actually I'm, disc I'm discussing with the production company of doing a show for one of the very popular TV, TV channels. Because I was doing t TV shows about films a lot mm. for many years and I'm known for that. And now we are talking about actually the device. Uh, a hedonistic uh, 
weight losing show, show like not torture people with uh, hunger and all this unbearable physical exercise, but to give them like really good, nice food, <laughs> eat a lot, <laughs> eat good food and lose weight <laughs> and enjoy life. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so that's brilliant. You'll have to uh, let me know about that. Yeah, um, sure. You just follow follow my blog. You see the Google Translate and you'll get the idea. Yeah, absolutely. That's fantastic, Sam. That's fantastic. Cool. Um, and where do you kind of see lchf.ru going kind of from here? I mean, you, you mentioned kind well, of the web store. Yeah, I uh, think people. Well, what, what, what we are trying to do is to build a community. And of course, I mean, for me, it's it, it became... Can, it, it became a job. It became a business because it's a website. We write, have to, to, to do a lot of work for that. I employed a couple of people to work for that. So yeah, we tried to to build a community to provide people with high quality LCHF food ingredients like, uh, or as I said, like all this uh, flowers and fiber husk and high quality oils, for example, which are also hard to find. In Russia, all the things that people can um, do, some like baking and uh, have some variety of food. We are now developing a business to business program. So we are talking to a bakery and a cafe in Moscow that they will serve our bread and our desserts. Actually, I have a very <laughs> really nice guy who is uh, who is a chef and who is working who is working on on recipes for us, and he is trying to bake things. Uh, with LCHF ingredients, with almond flour and Brilliant. with some kind of natural sweeteners like erythritol based and stuff. We have been thinking about um, like people can order cakes. Like even LCHF people, they have like big parties and weddings and birthdays. And some, sometimes I don't like endorse people to eat, to eat LCHF cakes every day. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you need you need you need a big you want a big party you you want some kind of festivity in your life yeah why not to treat yourself with a cake which doesn't contain sugar or like normal flour and which is really low carb so we are working on it we're developing it and the idea is to develop it start in Moscow and then go to the regions I would say got people from like Siberia contacting me that they have like low carb shops and they want me to supply them with our products and then go to Ukraine countries like Ukraine Kazakhstan Azer actually I have very strong interest from Azerbaijan wow <laughs> yeah so yeah to start the movement and to to lead it basically yeah, absolutely. That's what it's all about. I mean, it's kind of coming from all over the place. Like Andreas Enfeld obviously kind of started it in Sweden a lot, um, a along with Nordstrom and like kind of the other guys. Um, uh, but then kind of in South Africa, it's Professor yeah. Tim Noakes. And then for Russia, it's Sam Klebanov. So yeah, and, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not the professor, but... <laughs> No, but you can you can kind of be the uh, the catalyst for bringing exactly. everybody together and, and, and yeah. making and them I'm, aware of the research. Yeah. And I'm trying to bring more professionals, like because I I cannot pretend I'm a professional. I I only telling people, okay, I'm living like that. I'm trying it on, on myself. I'm reading a lot, like so I can share my knowledge with you. But if you want like real real professionals, I can bring them to you too. Yeah, that's what we are doing. Absolutely, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Um, and as we've kind of said through the interview, people can can check out the blog lchf.ru um, online, obviously. And then you've kind of got the Facebook pages there and Twitter and things like that. And people yeah. can follow you on Twitter um, at Sam Klebanov as well. All the links are in the description below or on the website if you're watching through the blog. Um, and so, yeah, is there is there anything else that kind of you'd like to share with the audience? Well, I just hope that yeah, more people will hear it, more people will improve their lives to the good, because I think that's what the whole thing is about. That's what I like about this business with LCHF, because it's like also what I liked with film business, because you like you either produce a good film or, or distribute a good film, bring a good film to the country, and people think that, okay, they got a new experience which enriched them. Enriched them, and the same with the food. Like people, lots of people now think that okay, their life is changing to the good, and I think that, that that's what's important. And thank you for for your experience because I think your experiment helped to persuade a lot of people because people really? can can yeah people can read about lo lots of like controlled studies, but it sounds like kind of dry and very scientific. But when they just see a guy 
like you, doing it on himself. They start to sing. Yeah, absolutely. It was, it was it was purely there to kind of demonstrate what kind of the, the randomized control styles. Yeah, are showing, can, can I ask can I ask you a question? Because yeah. somebody asked me this question on Facebook. When you ate five thousand calories of LCHF food and didn't gain weight, mm -hmm. again just a little bit, not as much as on junk food, what happened to all this excessive energy? Because that's yeah. that's what people think: calorie in, calorie calorie in, calorie out. What's happening with uh, with the difference? So, um, I mean, I've I've spoken to kind of a lot of the researchers, Dr. Eric Westman um, and uh, Professor uh, Dominic D'Agostino, and kind of all these guys um, about about this and kind of where where are all these cal calories kind of going? And of of course, kind of the calories are going into something, but they're either being um, being used for energy, so your body temperature will go up uh, for it, or um, you'll lose them, so you will actually lose them in your stool. Um, so you sort of, you know, down the toilet, basically, mm -hmm. is what Dr. Westman kind of says. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of with that is that um, your your energy expenditure will go up, and you know when it when it kind of comes down to it, the physics of the problem are true. If you are losing weight, you will be in a calorie deficit because that's what the, th the, the laws of thermodynamics tell us. But eating less isn't necessarily the way to do that. Mm. You know, so eating less doesn't necessarily mean more weight loss, for instance. Um, so it, it, it's all about trying to store less calories than you're accumulating rather than eating less to lose weight. If you see what I mean, um, so yeah. it's it's, tr it's trying to um, it's all about trying to um, manipulate the biochemistry of the person through the foods that they eat to try and get them to store less calories than they're accumulating. And a, a low carb, high fat diet kind of allows you to do that, and you can eat more food than on a low fat, high carb diet, um, and and still um, still lose more weight. On that, even though you're eating more calories, your body will work um, work with a low carb, high fat diet to make you lose more more weight in that kind of way. Um, has that kind of answered your question, Sam? Yeah, thank you, thank you, Sam. <laughs> Absolutely, it's, it's 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 really complicated, and we we don't fully understand what what's going on here because there are you know millions of biochemical reactions that are kind of going through the body at every given moment. Um, so it's it's not only impossible to completely understand how it's doing it, um, but like, you know, kind of just through the process of, you know, either re raising the uh, the temperature or um, sort of, you know, having the, the urge to be more active possibly and things like that. Um, kind of help you kind of regulate your body fat better but it needs to be available is the point and sort of lowering your insulin levels through carbohydrate restriction is the way to kind of liberate your body fat stores so that's mm. kind of a way to put it to um, if that makes sense and hopefully I didn't speak too quickly there so no no no, no, no. <laughs> cool excellent I got it. no no it's fine absolutely yeah yeah we can we can even do kind of a a, a post for for lchf.ru. I could try yeah. and explain it, and then you could translate it, and um, yeah, sure. that'd be great. That'd be awesome. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, there's just one more thing left to do, and that's to hear a smash it out from Sam Klevenov. Um, so on three, I want you to shout "smash it out" to the camera. So one, two, three, smash it out. Awesome! That's what I'm talking about. Thank you so much for okay, your time. Thank you, Sam. It's been an absolute pleasure. And uh, yeah, I recommend everybody the just check out lchf.ru um, and you can go to all the social networks from there. Perfect, Sam. Take care and hopefully we'll get you back on the show soon. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye.